Hello and welcome. Okay, so we're soon gonna start. The time is supposed to be 6 p.m. on the dot. So I'm gonna leave us time to join up. By exactly six, we are gonna start. But before we start, I'm gonna uh, let us know the the way we are gonna be going about our classes. So we've all seen our timetable. Our timetable is already up there. If you check our pages, YouTube, Instagram, if you check out our Facebook pages, you're gonna see our timetable. So today we're gonna to be starting with physics. And the way we are gonna do on physics today, that's how we're gonna be working on other subjects. After physics now, we're gonna be looking at uh, government. So prepared for you a very, very rich content that is direct and straight to the point, exactly what you need for you to pass your jam and your wire can echo. So the way the classes are planned are as follows. So we have our introduction, then we'll go straight to the point on the concept that is to be treated for that day. Like today, we're gonna to be looking at introduction to physics and measurements. We're gonna also be looking at dimension. So the way our course content is planned is that immediately after this, we'll start the course. And the course is arranged in such a way that it goes straight to the point. We don't want too much talking. We'll just go straight to the point, then we'll solve past questions. And that's why we have, we have what is physics, then we'll go straight to measurements, fundamentals and derived quantities and units. Look at the measuring instrument, the vernier calipers, um, the, the micrometer screw gauge. Look at dimensions, how do we use the dimensions in physics? Then we look at uh, accuracy of these measuring instruments. 
we are supposed to know the measuring accuracy for the meter rule, for the vernier calipers, for the uh, various instruments, because they always come out in jam. Then we'll solve past questions. So immediately after getting the concept, you see the three things we are learning, introduction, measurement, uh, measurement, dimensions, and the measuring instrument. We'll solve the possible past questions from Jamba and Wayek that relate to this very topic. Okay. So if we go through this, you're gonna see, this is very, very, we are gonna be representing everything pictorially so that it will be easier for the students to understand. We don't want to talk too much, but we want to go straight to the point. So you can see the fundamental quantities, you can see the derived quantities, and immediately after that, we say, what is measurement and what are the basic measurements that we do? Then we'll quickly look at the measuring instruments, the ones for time, the ones for volume, the ones for length. Then after that, we look at the measuring accuracies. Like I told you, this always comes out in jam. For meter is one millimeter or 0 0.1 cm. For vernier calipers is 0 0.1 millimeter or 0 0.01 cm. Whereas for micrometer screw gauge, which is most accurate for length, it is 0 0.01 millimeter mercury or 0 0.001 cm. Then for beam balance, which is measurement from mass, it is 0 0.001 grams, and that of stopwatch is 0 0.1 second. Okay. So very, very importantly, these are the major things that you need for you to get through uh, measurements and dimensions in your JAMP and WIAC exams. And we're gonna look at sample problems that will take care of, that all this will take care of. So this is a vernier caliper, and this is how the measurement is taken. This is a diagram of a vernier caliper. So you know that for every vernier caliper, we have the vernier scale, we have the main scale. You can see the locking screw. And you can see an example of a cylinder that is being measured. Okay. Now, this is a measurement that is taken out. So if given a reading like this, this is how you get it in jam. So how do you know the reading of this uh, vernier scale? How do you get to know the reading if you're given this in jam? This is what they are likely going to give you in jam on your wire. So you can see that the measurement just before the zero of the vernier scale here is 22. You can see two here. Then you can see the two lines there. So you that is 22. Then when you now come into the vernier scale, you check where does the up and the down coincide. You can see it is that four. That's why you have 0 0.4. So if you say 22 millimeter plus 0 0.4 millimeter, it gives us 22.4. So that is how you take a vernier caliper scale. Very, very important. Now move to the next, which is uh, micrometer screw gauge. How do you take a measurement for a micrometer screw gauge? How do you take measurement for micrometer screw gauge? So the same way, once you close your anvil and your spindle, very quickly, you check the measurement. What is the next? What is the measurement here? You can see it's around five point something. So it's going to be that five point something plus where it inter intersects with this, which is twenty five. So that is how you take for micrometer screw gauge. Now, immediately after that, we're gonna look at dimensions. We're gonna find out that dimension is just the relationship between the various uh, physical quantities represented by the letter MLT. And we're gonna look at uh, possible applications of dimension. Then immediately after that, we look at the real thing, which is examples from our past questions, whether it's WIAC or JAMP. So where can we see them? What are the examples in past questions? Okay, so you can see this is uh, from Jam 2017 physics. This is uh, Jam 2015 physics. This is Jam 2014. So th all these are questions that we've gone in to find out. This is Jam 1995. So we are going to be solving all these problems. Then if you are in our special group, then after the class, you can also check out for more uh, past questions. We can look at them together. This is supposed to be an interactive class where uh, we try to teach you, but you also can also help out in the teaching. By so doing, all of us can uh, interact and have a perfect learning. 
Okay, so what I just did now is the introduction. So those are what we are going to be seeing. And immediately is uh, sharp six, we are going to start. So for those of you that already joined, like at Atanga John, uh, you're able to see what we'll plan for you. But by sharp six, we are going to be starting. And in subsequent lectures, our time is going to be sharp six. Once it's six o'clock, we we'll start. Uh, we are not going to be wasting time because we want it to be very brief, but covering everything we need. So that's why we made the time. Some of us might be asking, why did you make? Why did we make the time one hour? One hour? We made the time one hour. Made it one hour because we believe that within one hour, if we go straight to the point and solve past questions, you'll be able to understand everything needed for you to pass your jam. We are not the type, we don't want to make the courses to be boring, uh, taking a whole lot of time. So we want it to be focused and effective. Uh, John, please, can you hear me? I want to make sure that my volume is okay before we start. Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Or let me test it out on my, let me check and see whether I can be heard. Let me quickly go to you. So we are live streaming. Are... Okay, okay, the volume is okay. So I just went to uh, Facebook to check out my volume to make sure that my voice is clearly heard before we start uh, so that we don't make mistakes. Okay, so our volume is okay. And we're gonna be starting very soon. By sharp six, we'll start, like I said, we are not gonna be leaving out any time. Okay, we're almost at six now. Okay, so it's almost six, we're about to start. Okay, so please, I hope you, can we see my screen? Are we seeing my PowerPoint physics screen? Is that what we are seeing? Okay, we just want to have one minute to start. So, okay, hey, welcome. Today we're going to be looking at physics. Uh, today is the first day we are starting and we're going to be hitting the point immediately. So cost content, what are we going to be looking at today? Today we're going to be looking at what physics is. Uh, immediately after that, we'll check out measurements, we'll look at fundamental and derived quantities and units, we'll look at measuring instruments, our vernier calipers, our micrometer screw gate and the rest. Then we'll look at dimensions, uh, then limitations and experimental measurements and accuracy. Then we'll solve past questions. So let's move immediately. We're going to be moving fast. Then uh, when we get to past questions, we can look at everything. Uh, comprehensively. 
So physics is the natural science that involves the study of matter and its motion through space and time, along with related concepts such as energy and force. So in our everyday life, we find out that physics is what we see when we drive. The way the car that you drive moves, that is physics. Lightning and thunder, that is physics. The mechanism of our thermometer working is physics. Uh, the mechanism of the camera that we use is also physics. Okay, so quickly, let's look at fundamental quantities and derived quantities. So the fundamental quantities are those basic quantities and units from where you can get the derived quantities and units, okay? So fundamental quantities here, we're talking about length. And the unit of length is meter. And meter is represented by N. So this is very important. When we start talking about dimension, so whenever you see, uh, you see length, we are going to be representing it by L for dimension. But for units, it is M. Representing meter, pounds mass is kilogram with pair represented as a temperature, which is Kelvin represented as k, and amount of substance very importantly mole. So these are the basic quantities. So every other quantity in uh, physics is got from these basic quantities. Okay, so let's quickly look at the derived quantities. So these derived quantities and units are actually gotten from the basic quantities. So Derived quantities are units are gotten from basic quantities or from the fundamental quantities by either uh, multiplication or division. So you can see this is m squared, meaning that this is meters into two. So you're multiplying two meters to derive area. And that's why we say that area is length times breadth. For volume, you're multiplying three lengths to get volume. And those three lengths are the length, breadth, and height. And that's why we say that uh, volume is derived from length. So you can simply get volume from length by multiplying three lengths. So that's why we say volume is derived from length. So volume is a derived quantity, whereas length is the basic quantity. Now we we'll talk about density. Density is mass over volume represented with these units, kilogram per meter uh, squared, cubed, I mean. Velocity is displacement over time, which is simply distance over time. Acceleration is change in velocity over time. So displacement is when you're talking about acceleration with regards to a direction. So that the velocity would have mean the same, meant the same thing as speed, but we'll call it displacement because we are checking the direction. Okay, so let's move forward to other derived quantities. So we'll look at force. So force is simply mass times acceleration. And the unit is Newton's. Energy is force time distance and is measured in joules. Power is work over time. So when we get to the past questions, we are going to be able to see all these quantities and see the way they relate. So momentum is mass times velocity. Pressure is force over area. Frequency is number of oscillations over time. Then we'll have other quantities. Okay. So quickly, let's go into measurements. Having known the derived and basic quantities. So let's look at measurement, okay? So what is measurement? What's the essence of measurement? In physics, all these quantities like length and mass, you need to know how big they are. If you don't measure, you will not know. So if I tell you that the length of my hand is 10 centimeter, how do you confirm that the length of this my hand is 10 centimeter? You place a meter rule, then you can know the length. So measurement is very, very important because without measurement, you cannot even quantify the size of your length, the size of your mass, or the size of the time. You need to use measuring instruments to measure. So what are the quantities that you measure? You can measure length, and in measuring length, you use meter rule. You can use, use micrometer screw gauge. You can also use a linear caliper, depending on the size of the length you're measuring. If you're measuring time, you simply use stopwatch. And if you're measuring mass, you can use the beam balance. Okay, so if we say that measurements is the act or process of determining the size of a quantity, we measure in order to understand how big or small something is. 
So if you say that an ion is measuring 10 grams, it simply means that it's bigger than the one measuring five grams. And that is the whole essence of measuring. So what and what do you measure? You can measure length, you can measure mass, and you can measure time. So you measure length using the meter rule, the micrometer screw gate and the rest, whereas you measure mass using the beam balance and time using stopwatch. Okay, so let's look at these instruments that we can use in taking these measurements. Let's look at them. Let's look at this instrument. So this is what we call stopwatch. So whenever you hear stopwatch that you can use the measuring time, you need to know how this stopwatch, how does it look? So this is an example of a stopwatch. We said that this our lecture is going to be Victoria, so that once you see it, you understand. So this, yeah, this like the pipette, the flux, and other measuring cylinder, they are used for measuring volume. So this is for measuring time, for measuring volume. This is the beam balance for measuring weight or mass, in this our case. This is the vernier caliper for measuring length. This is the micrometer screw gauge for also measuring length. And this is the ruler meter rule for measuring length, okay? So now, Jam or Wayek is going to ask you about the accuracies of this measuring instrument. And that is why we picked out a slide for this, because this is a common question in your Jam or in your Wayek or in your NECO. So these are the measuring instruments and these are their measuring accuracy. So they will ask you what is the highest point to which a meter rule can measure. So in millimeter, it is one millimeter, and in centimeter, it is 0 0.1 cm. For vernier caliper, it is 0 0.1 millimeter, and in cm, it's 0 0.01 cm. For micrometer screw gate, it is 0 0.01 millimeter, and in cm, it is 0 0.001 cm. So I want you to understand this the way it goes. Micrometer screw gate has the highest accuracy. You can see where it is, 0 0.01. Meter rule is the smallest, or you use it in measuring bigger lengths. So the accuracy is the, uh, you can see this is, this uh, micrometer screw gate has the least accurate, um, has the most minimal length that you can measure to an accuracy. So you have here one millimeter here, 0 0.1 and 0 0.01. And if you're checking it in CM, it's going to be 0 0.1 CM, 0 0.01 CM, and 0 0.001 CM. So this is a constant question in JAM. You must, you just have to learn it. It's always going to come out, the measuring accuracies for the various measuring instruments. So take note of them, study them very well. It's always going to come out. Okay, so let's look at beam balance is 0 0.001 grams. So similar to what we have here, but it's in grams. Whereas stopwatch is 0 0.1 seconds. So measuring accuracy, very, very important. So we're gonna look at the past questions. When we are solving past questions now, we'll be able to see where this is applied. And that's why I brought out a given slide for it, just for it, because it's gonna be very, very important. Okay, so let's now go into using these various measuring instruments. So we are starting with a vernier camera. How do you take the reading on a vernier caliper? How can you take the reading on a vernier caliper? Now, this is, an, this is a vernier caliper. It has the main scale. This is the main scale, and this is the vernier scale. So you have what you want to measure. If it is internal, it has to be placed on top here. Yeah? But if it is external, it has to be placed between these jaws. Now, if you've taken your measurement, this is exactly how you're going to see it in Jambo wire. Can you see this second diagram? This is what you will be shown and you'll be told to read it out. So how do you read it out? That's what we are gonna study now. Now, if you're looking at this, you see zero here, you see one and you see two. So you are gonna take the first reading will be the reading of on the main scale just before the vernier scale. This is the vernier scale, this second block down. So you can see that this is two and you can see that this is two, two one and two, two. And that's why we have two, two millimeter, because this is two, the longest one followed by the other one, two, one, and the point before the vernier scale making it two, two. So that's why we are having two, two here. Then how did we get this 0 0.4? Then inside this vernier scale for 0 0.4, inside this vernier, go on, on gen immediately, change it. 
So my light is off, but you can still see my screen very clearly, so I'm continuing. So inside this very venial scale, you're going to check where there is coincidence, where there is interception between the lines down and the lines up. So if you check, you can see this is one, two, three, four at point four. The line down is exactly on where it is up. And that's why we have 0 0.4. So you now combine what you have on your main scale to what you have on your venial scale. That gives you the total reading. And that's why we have 22, which is what we got from this main scale, two, two, one, two, two. And what we have on the venial scale, which is the point of intersection, which is at point, if you count from here, point four. And that's why we have 22.4 millimeters. So that is how you take your reading for venial caliper. And we'll move straight down to micrometer questions from both venial caliper and micrometer screw gauge every year in your jamba and your YX. So we're going to look at them now after this explanation. OK, so this is a typical micrometer screw gauge. Uh, in a typical micrometer screw gauge, you have your anvil, the, the supports here are the anvil and the spindle. So between your anvil and spindle, that's where you put the object that you want to measure. Okay, this is what we call frame, and this is what we call the sleeve and the thimble. So just like we have the main scale and the venial scale for your venial caliper, that's how we have the main scale here is the sleeve for the micrometer screw gauge, whereas the venial scale is the thimble. So you have the sleeve and the thimble. So for you to get a good measurement, you have it has to be the addition of the reading from your sleeve and that of your thimble. So, and that is the example of what is given here. So you can see from here that the main scale, which is the sleeve, is reading around five point something, whereas the venial scale, the point of intersection is around 25. So it has to be the combination of what is here and what is here. So the ratchet is what you use in making the movement of your spindle and anvil to get closer to the object that you want to measure. So take note of that, very, very important, okay? So we've looked at the venial caliper and the micrometer screw gauge. Those are where you're gonna be having your questions from. Okay, so let's now quickly look at dimension. Then immediately after dimensions, we are gonna move straight into solving past questions. So in solving past questions, we are gonna be able to exhaust everything that we've learned we see them exactly how they come out in JAM and YEC, okay? So let's keep going. So we are now in dimensions. So what is dimensions and what are we expected to learn under dimensions? Dimension of a physical quantity indicates the way the fundamental quantities of mass, length, and time can be represented using the letters of MLT. So you see, whenever we're talking about dimensions, we're always using only M, L, and T, where M stands for mass, L stands for length, T stands for time. And these are the basic units, MLT, mass, length, time. They are the basic quantities. So their units represent the basic units. And their dimension also represent the only uh, quantities that you use in dimension analysis, OK? So you can see that in all these dimensions, we're only seeing LT and M only, representing mass, length, and time, OK? so. It tells us the physical nature of a quantity, and it can be used to relate fundamental units of a physical quantity. So example, let's look at velocity. What is the dimensional representation of velocity? We all know that velocity is simply displacement over time, which also means distance over time. So distance can be measured as length, and that is why it is L. Whereas time can be measured as time, and that is why it is T. So, the dimension of velocity is now L over T, which can also be written as L T to power minus one because T is under, that's why it is minus one if you want to write it directly. So this is how you represent dimensions. Very, very important. In representing your dimension, it has to be in this block bracket and it has to be in capital letter. It's never in small letter. So whenever you're talking about dimensional analysis, we are talking about representation of our quantities in terms of their uh, fundamental quantities written in form of M, L, and T. Okay, let's look at another quantity, say area. How did you get area? Area is simply gotten by saying length times breadth. And we know that length is L, breadth is also L. And that's why we can say L times L, which is L squared. So this is the dimension of 
area, L to power two. Take note, it's not M square, but L to power two. Now, lastly, let's look at the dimension of volume. We know that volume is length times breadth times height. So both length, breadth and height, they are all lengths. And that's why we have L times L times L, giving us L to power three. And this is the dimensional representation of volume, L to power three, okay. So now we look at the applications of dimension. Why are you learning dimension? Are there applications of dimension? Are there reasons why you would want to learn dimension? Number one is that you use it to find the true relationship between physical quantities. We are the correct mathematical relation or formula cannot be easily obtained. So you can easily use this to deduce a mathematical formula or mathematical relations for physical quantity. And number two is that it is helpful to determine the appropriate unit for a physical quantity, okay? And that leads us to the main thing for today, which is solving uh, past questions, related past questions to what we are looking at. Okay, so let's look at these past questions. Uh, mostly for today, we're gonna to be looking at past questions from JAM. So maybe when we head into our special group, we can look at past questions for WAEC and other ones, but one once you're able to get the ones in JAM, it's most likely that you're going to get the ones in Y because JAM questions are a little bit uh, higher than what you can see in Y. So let's look at JAM uh, question 2017 for physics, question number 28. So if you check your JAM past questions, question number 28 for 2017, you're going to see this question. The dimension of power is, you have option A, ML squared T, to power minus three, B, ML squared T to power three, C, MLT squared, then D, MLT cube. Okay, so this is dimension. And you know dimension is just what we just finished learning. And you can see it's having the first question. So number one, if you want to solve this, you have to know the relationship between power and other quantities. Power is what you are told to find. And we all know from the units that I gave us. So let me quickly slide up for those of us that joined now. So power, you can see power is simply equal to work over time. So this video is recorded. So you can always go to our YouTube channel or Facebook to see them in case if you missed out. So power is work over what time. So let's go back to the question. You can see power is work over time. Okay, so what is work again? You need to still bring it down. Work is first time distance, time is time. Time cannot go down because time is already the basic of the fundamental quantity. So you can see the derived quantity, you can always turn them into other fundamental quantities, but the fundamental quantities, you cannot take them down from what they are. So now you now, instead of having power, you are now having first time distance over time, but force, is still not a fundamental quantity, it's still a derived quantity. So you still need to take it down again. So what is force? Force is mass times acceleration. So you still bring down your D here and your T here. So now you now have MAD over T, but A, acceleration is still not a fundamental quantity because acceleration is velocity over time. And that is why we change this. Instead of A, we are having V over T here. So we're having in, in who we have having mass times V times D all over T times T, okay? So now we have mass, which is a fundamental quantity, D, which is length, a fundamental quantity, T, which is time, a fundamental quantity, but volume is not a fundamental quantity yet because volume is length into three. So we can now expand this. We're now having mass times volume. In place of volume, you can have what? Uh, length times length again. Okay, not volume actually, this is velocity, please. So V is velocity. So velocity is distance over time. So we are gonna be having double D now. So instead of one D, we're having extra D, then we're having over time, which is this T. So this is what we are having now. So we are now having one mass, which is this M here, two distances or two distance DT, which is L times two. Distance is measured in length, which is length times two. Then we have three lengths, one, two, three, and that's why we're having T3. So this is the dimension of this, and you can bring it down by saying ML squared, which is what we have here. Taking this T 
cube up, we now have t to the power minus three, and that makes option A the right answer. I hope this is clear. So you can see in the way of solving, we went from saying what power is equivalent to in order to get it down to the barest uh, fundamental quantities of mass, length, and time. And that's what gave us this. So let's look at question number two. We see JAM 2015 physics question number 33. And you can see this is purely a micrometer screw gauge. This is a micrometer screw gauge. So how do, do we measure using micrometer screw gauge? How do we measure using micrometer screw gauge? That's what we're gonna look at now. Okay, so you can see this is the sleeve and this is the thimble. So you have from the diagram above, the measuring accuracy of the micrometer screw gauge is what? So what is the measurement? What measurement can you deduce from this diagram above? So let's look at it. Okay, so on the main scale, you have zero, you have one, two, three, four. So you can see that four is the highest here. So that's why we have main scale four. Can you see four here? So let's take the vernier scale. So the total measurement is normally the main scale from plus the vernier scale. So the main scale, as we can see here, is four. And that's why we are having four. So what is the vernier scale? For the thimble, we say that it is the point of intersection. You can see this is 15, and it's interceded just a little bit ahead of 15, which is 16, or you call it 0 0.16 millimeters. So addition of this and this will give us 4.16. And that makes uh, option D the right answer. Okay, so let's look at the next question, which is JAM 2014 physics, question number two. And the question goes, what is the least possible error encountered when taking measurement with a meter rule? So once you're given this, what is the least possible error? It's another way of saying, what is the measuring accuracy of the meter rule? So I'm going to take us back to the slides that I have. So it's asking for meter rule. So I told you that this is very important because there's always questions on this. So let's go back to that slide. So this is the slide that contains the measuring accuracies of the various instruments. You can see for meter rule is one millimeter or 0 0.1. So that question could have been, what is the accuracy for Vernier caliper or micrometer screw gauge. So that's why we have this slide. So please, you can snap this slide or you can quickly jot down this. Measuring accuracy for meter rule is one millimeter or 0 0.1 cm. For vernier caliper is 0 0.1 millimeter or 0 0.01 cm. For micrometer screw gauge is 0 0.01 millimeter or 0 0.001 cm. So you see, jump or wire will always ask you in millimeter and in cm. Those are the units they normally use. For beam balance is 0 0.001 grams, and for stopwatch is 0 0.1 seconds. So with this now, let's get back to the question and know the answer. So what is the accuracy for meter rule? So it's either what? One millimeter or 0 0.1 millimeter, okay? So let's go back again. Let's make sure we are picking the right answer. <laughs> Okay, so you have one millimeter or 0 0.1 cm. One millimeter or 0 0.1 cm. One millimeter or 0 0.1 cm. So one millimeter or 0 0.1 cm. So you can see it here, option A is one millimeter. And that is the answer. Okay. So you can see also where I wrote the solution, where the solution is written here. Meter rule is an instrument used to measure length. It is graduated in centimeters or millimeters. The least graduation is one millimeter or 0 0.1 cm. So you can see the answer here is also together with the slides that we've given. Now, this is the measuring accuracy, one millimeter. You can see so option A is the right answer. Okay, so let's move down to the next question, which is JAM 1994 physics. Okay, and the question says, what is the reading of the vernier caliper shown above? So like I said before, the problems we are solving here is exactly what you could have seen in your YEC, YEC and JAM, the same syllables, but the 
problems in jam, they are normally a little bit tougher than what you have in your jam. Okay. So let's continue. What is the reading of the venial caliper shown above? So this is the venous caliper shown above. And like I told us before, we take the main measurement first, the main scale, then the venial scale. So the main scale here is 1.3. So this is one CM, as you can see, this is one here. So this is 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. So it's 1.3 just before the venial scale. That's why we have 1.3 here. Then the venial scale is when we go to the venial scale, uh, the venial scale, look at where there is intersection. So if we count from here, one, two, three, four, five, you see this is where there is intersection at a point of 0 0.09, and that's why we have 0 0.09. So if we add together, we're gonna to have 1.39. And that makes up some C the right answer. So it's normally the same way. You can see that there is similarity in measurement using the venial caliper and using the uh, micrometer aggregate. You get first your the measurement on your main scale, then add up to what you have on your venial scale, it gives you the answer. Okay, so now let's look at the last question for today. Uh, we have JAM uh, 1995 physics. Which of the following is the dimension of pressure? Which of the following is the dimension of pressure? Is it A, ML to the power minus one T square? Is there any of this? Okay, solution. Pressure is simply equal to force over area. We all know. So if we go back to our slide, we see that we already stated this. So this is pressure. Pressure is force over area. Force over area. So these are the derived quantities. We looked at this when we started. So pressure is what? Force over area. So you can see it's a force over area. So, but force is not yet a, a fundamental quantity. So we have to still break force down. And we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So mass is a fundamental quantity, but acceleration is not. So we need to still break acceleration down. So what is acceleration? Acceleration is velocity over time. So we can see that mass is a fundamental quantity, time is a fundamental quantity, but velocity is not. So we still need to break velocity down. So what is velocity? Velocity is distance over time or displacement over time, which is L over T. So we're having extra T here because of this L over T. So with this, we have M times L all over T squared. And that is what we have here. So this is force. But you know that pressure is force over area. So you're supposed to have this all over L squared, which is area. Area is distance into two, which is L squared. And that's why we have pressure to be what we have here, which is the force all over the area, which is L squared. So if you break this down, we are gonna have MLT to the power minus two, because we are having double T times L over L to the power minus two. Okay, so now we now have L here and we have here. So one L has to go and that's why we are having just only one L here. So this makes the dimension to be ML to power minus one T to power minus two. Okay, so why are we getting that? Because we have L here and we have L here. So L cancel L, we leave only one single L under here. And that's why we are having ML to power minus one because it's just one single L. Whereas we are still having our T to power minus two. So this is the right option. The right option is A. And with that, we'll come to the end of this class. Okay. So do we have any questions? On Daniel. Yes, uh, okay. I have, I have some okay, you have some questions. Daniel has some questions. Okay, before Daniel starts asking us questions, please, if you are joining us on uh, Facebook and you have any questions and concerns, drop them on the comments section of the Facebook. If you are joining us on YouTube, drop the question on the comments section of the YouTube. So any question that we cannot handle while we are having this class, in our subsequent class, we should be able to handle such questions. And if you also have questions that will demand us to solve out, 
and you are in our special group, drop them in the special group. So we have plenty of teachers there that are ready to help you solve every problem that you have. And that is the advantage of joining our class uh, by buying our flash. Once you get our flash, you're qualified to be in the special group where you can ask any question and get help. Whether it's your school assignment, whether it's anything academics, we have teachers that are there to help you. So that is that for that. So in order for you to join that special WhatsApp group, it's just two ways you can do that. It's either you have our flash, when you pay for the flash, we'll send you the flash. And when you make donations, your donations will help us to create good course content like this, help us pay our teachers that will be answering your questions when you ask them in the special group. And that is it. So Daniel, please, can you go on with your question? Okay, sir. Thank you so much. So uh, we are uh, talking about dimension. So the dimension, now I'm looking at the velocity, uh, the, the V, which is length times breadth and height. So I'm still having some challenge, some challenges down there because uh, I don't know how come about of the triple L that shows below. So I don't know how it comes about. Okay, thank you. I hope everybody got the question. So let's explain this. So so we can look at, this is dimension now. We are looking at, we want to find the dimension of volume. So first of all, we need to know what volume is. Volume simply stands for length times breadth times height. So if you have, if you have, uh, say, this is my phone. So what is the volume of this, my phone? So if we take this as the height, this is the height. So this height is measured as length. If you want to measure this height, you will use a meter rule. So it's length. So this is the breadth. Can you see the breadth? Yes, sir. Okay. Or you can call this, this is the height. Height is the length. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Then this is the normal length, which is L that you know, which is also a length. Then the breadth is the thickness of this phone, which can also be measured as length. So you can see that all of them are all length. To measure this one, you need a ruler. To measure this one, you need a ruler. And to measure the thickness, you also need a ruler. So that's why there are three lengths. And that's why we have L to power three. Because you cannot call this one time. Neither can you call it mass. So it's always, this is length. This is length. It's just that this length is different from this length and different from the length of the thickness. So all of them are length, but measuring in different directions. So it's their direction that makes it look as if it's breadth and height. So okay. since all of them resolve to the same fundamental quantity of length, that's why we call it length to power three, length times length times length. So yes, sir. Daniel, is that clear now? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It's very clear, huh? It's clear, yes, sir. Okay. So the fundamental quantities that you use in dimensional analysis are what? Length, mass, and what? Time. Time. So Time. M, Time. L, and T. Okay. So any other question? No. Onafu Aoluashe, can I ask you a question before I sign up? Let me ask my students yes, question please. before. Okay, Onafu. Three fundamental quantities. And trade drive quantity. Yeah, the question. Go. Yes, um, is Olua Shei there? Question. Sorry, my network went out. Oh, yeah. So give me examples of three fundamental quantities and three derived quantities. Fundamental quantities. Fundamental quantities. Velocity. 
Am I correct? No, come again. No, for three fundamental quantities. Length. Length, mass, and time. Okay. Length, mass, and time. Very accurate. Why Those are the fundamental quantities. Why the right quantities are... So we also have ampere, Kelvin, and more. Yes. Why the okay, the right quantities are what? Velocity. Area. And volume. Okay. Velocity. What again? Area good, density, densities. Okay. Daniel, are you there? Daniel, I hope you know you're on mute. So if you want to talk, you have to unmute yourself first. Okay, sir. Sorry. I'm here, sir. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, so Daniel, what are the measuring instruments for length? The three of them. What are the three measuring instruments for length? Uh, we have um, breadth. We have. Um, no, no, no. You can be looking at my slide. That's what is showing there. What are the measuring okay. instruments? I'm asking you for instruments now, not the length. Okay. Meter rule. Good. Vanya cal calibers. And micrometer screw gauge. Those are the three instruments you can use in measuring length. If you want to measure mass, what instrument can you use? You can use the beam balance. And if you want to measure time, you can use the word stopwatch. And these are their various accuracies. For meter root is one, for millimeter for vernier caliper is 0 0.1 millimeter. And for micrometer screw gauge, it is 0 0.01. The accuracy for the beam balance is 0 0.01 gram. And that's for stopwatch is 0 0.1 second. Okay. So with that, I believe we are good now. So in subsequent class, we are going to be looking at motion. And just the way we covered everything here, we're going to cover everything in basic motion in the next class. So make sure you join in time. Make sure you don't miss the class. Okay. At some time, we're going to share these uh, our learning material in the special group so that everybody there can have these slides. Um, practice with it. You can see that this slide is just straight to the point what you need in your jam. It did not tell so much of other stories. So as a way of revision and closing, we looked at what physics is, what measurement is, what fundamental and variable quantities and units are, the measuring instrument dimensions, their limitations and accuracy, and we solved past questions. So this is the slide for the definition of what physics is a natural science that involves the study of matter and its motion through space and time as it relates energy and force. And we looked at the, these are the fundamental quantities. The length, mass, and time. We also have electric and small. These are the derived pressure. And we also have force, energy, power, momentum, pressure, frequency, and the rest. In order for us to know how big or small something is. So whether it's mass or time, you're measuring to know how big they are. And the fundamental things we measure are length, mass, and time. And we use the measurement instruments known as stopwatch for time. This is stop. Watch for time. This is base for length, and this is meter root for length. So, all imbalance is for mass. These pipette and cylinder are for volume. So, take note of this measuring instrument. Then, went down to learn about the accuracies of this measuring instrument. You can see the one with the most, the most accurate for smaller 
measurement is micrometer screw gauge, followed by Benia caliper, and then meter rule. Then you can see the accuracy for beam balance. For meter rule is one millimeter for Benia caliper, 0 0.1 millimeter. For micrometer screw gauge, 0 0.01 millimeter. For beam balance, 0 0.001 grams. And for stopwatch, 0 0.1 seconds. Then we went to measurement using veneer caliper. We say that it's simply the addition of the measurement on the main scale, you can see here 22, plus that of the veneer scale, 0 0.4, giving us 22.4. Then we went down to the measurement on the micrometer, which is the measurement on the main scale, which is the, the veneer scale, which is the thimble, you can see. This year. Then we went to dimensions. We say that dimensions are simply representation of every quantity in terms of the fundamental quantities represented as MLT. Then we looked at the applications in providing formulas and the units of physical quantities. Then we went to solve some past questions of physics 217, 215 down. Okay, next class, we are going to be looking at motion. And without any other question, we're going to be stopping. Thank you. God bless you. Make sure you take down the notes. Any day I'm teaching, once we are on each slide, make sure you're taking notes on that slide. So if I open like this, have your pen and paper. You quickly write down what is here. If, I, if I'm on this slide, there's plenty. Quickly write the things on the slide revising. You can also continue to write. It's very important because that's where you go to. Thank you.